Hey everybody, welcome to Interact. Hope you've had a great day. Whether you are here on site or whether you are online, we welcome you to this time as we study God's word together. You are so important to this time because the, the purpose of this time is to discuss God's word together. We grow better when we grow together. So Debbie is our online host and she will facilitate any discussion questions that you might send to her. And we would like to hear from you uh, this evening, any insights you have, any thoughts you have, any questions you might have. Uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer, and then uh, we're going to welcome our special guest for tonight. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for this time where we can study your word together. We really believe that as iron sharpens iron, we sharpen one another when we study the word of God together. And so we give you this time we pray that you would be glorified in and through this time. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come. I pray that we would decrease and you would increase. And I pray that something of eternal value would take place because we have spent this time in your presence studying your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am really excited about our time tonight. We have a great youth pastor here at Cross Point Family Church. I love Dan Chauncey's heart. He shared this morning on how we can make an eternal splash. And so he is going to lead our discussion time tonight. So Dan, come on up, uh, introduce yourself and take it away. All right. Hello. Thanks hard for having me here. Um, and, and I consider it a privilege to be able to speak on behalf of God and um, and I hope that you can receive what he has for you this evening. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the whole ripple effect concept, but it was pretty big. At least I remember like 10 years ago, Evan Almighty, that movie was out, and, and he talked about the uh, ripple effect where you drop a pebble into the water and it just keeps going on at least for a little while. Um, today, what I would like to do is step that up. Not just a ripple that just partly goes out, but a splash. And I'm going to call it an eternal splash. And that only happens when we allow God to work through us and lead us. And not for our glory, but for his glory. So um, my question would be right now for you is, are you ready to get wet? Uh, are you ready to enter into the splash zone at like at SeaWorld with, with, uh, with the, the well and all so forth? Um, because God wants you to get wet. That's, that's really the truth. Right. And, and in getting wet, you have the potential of impacting a life, not just today for a good, nice act of kindness, like the ripple effect concept is, but for all eternity. Um, and not only that person's life, but the life that they impact in other lives. So um, I hope that you really are open to what maybe God has for you. And in order to take that, to have that openness, you are going to have to, if you haven't already, uh, open your picture of how big our God is. Mm -hmm. And Because uh, if you have them in this box and you think that, well, if I do this act of kindness, it really stays to that point. It can only do what you see it can happen. Then your picture of God is too small. I have a Bible verse that I'm going to hang on today. And it's from the book of Ephesians, written by Paul. And Paul says this in Ephesians 3.20, if you want to look it up at home. Uh, or here for that matter, it says this, Now all glory to God, who is able, I love that word in there, able, through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask, and here's the key word for me coming up here, or think, um, that we can't even begin to think what God can do with an internal splash when we do it through him. Uh, we can't even conceptualize that. Um, so I, I, I believe it's a process that God uses these things. I believe that it's a matter of preparing his people, the, the, all people, to receive what he has for them. Obviously, we want people to receive Christ. We want them to be open to receiving Christ. Um, but that soil, like you spoke of, uh, you 
just last week. It feels like right. forever ago. <laughs> Three weeks ago. And last week when you talked about the soil needs to be ready and we need to right. actually cultivate our own soil. But I also believe that we play a part in preparing the soil for people to receive Christ and not only stop there, but also to grow in Christ, to grow in the fullness that he has promised us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a process. And the Bible gives a great illustration of that. Uh, one of the probably the most popular people um, ever known as a preparer would be who? Charles, you got it. Who is that person? John that the Baptist. John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> if Charles didn't have a mask on his face, I would have seen this. What are you talking about, Dan? You got it, Charles. Um, so John the Baptist is known because he says, I have come to prepare the way for Christ. For Christ's rival, which was no accident, the time was precisely when God wanted it because he knew at that time that that the whole world would be impacted and it needed to be especially at that time mm -hmm. to reach the world with his love with his message of hope and eternal life um, so but it didn't just start with John we're foolish to think that if we that, that goes back to that thinking that we need to think bigger mm -hmm. than that little box that we may be thinking of God and we need to realize that it started back in hundreds of years ago in the prophecies about Jesus, that he was the Messiah that is coming. Mm -hmm. It started in the field when the one worker says to the other worker, we may be in bondage, we may be stuck here, but our God has promised a deliverer. He is coming. That soil was being prepped. Those, those waves were being put in motion for the ultimate splash to come through Christ when he came. And so John the Baptist was really just... Man, he, he was certainly, I'm not going to lessen what he did, but he was just taking all that has been said and done through all conversations and God's enlightenment mm -hmm. and, and just made a big splash to get people's attention and say, mm -hmm. you know, God's on the, God's on the planet. Right. <laughs> Listen up. We're ready. He wants to do something in your life. So, so anyway, I hope that you have that picture because, again, if, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that God can accomplish more than you can think, you aren't going to step out of what I'm trying to get you to do if you aren't doing already, to do an internal splash. So if you were here Sunday in, in the church this morning, uh, we had a number of students and adults participate in a drama. And uh, it was a pretty cool drama, God-inspired drama, I believe. And, uh, and, and it was based off of a movie or it wasn't actually a movie, it was a TV series called Joan of Arcadia. It was out in the 90s. Very interesting. One of my favorite parts about this show is, is it has God, the God figure, um, stepping into this Joan's life, which in, in our uh, little, little drama today was Abby. Um, and, and God says to this young, uh, young adult, basically, uh, different things that he has for her to do. And and Joan or Abby's response, as Coriana played it today, uh, was, God, are you nuts? Like, seriously, can't, can't you do this? Aren't you big enough, God, to pull this off on your own? Why are you asking a teenager? Why are you asking a 55-year-old? Why are you asking an 80-year-old? God, you made the earth, basically is what she was saying. You, can't you handle this? Aren't you big enough? And um, so, so the question is, is God big enough do you have that big picture? And I jumped ahead of one of our questions here. And you can kick me in the leg if I do next time. But uh, before I tell you how the drama turned out, uh, we want to ask this question um, and open it up to you guys. Is what do you think keeps people from stepping out in their faith? What do you think keeps people from stepping out in your faith? Or their faith, I should say. And we would like to hear from you if you have any thoughts or comments or questions. And uh, I'll share a little bit to give you an opportunity uh, to, to think about maybe what perhaps keeps you from stepping out in faith. I think for me, uh, like many of you, I, I kind of grew up as a rugged individualist. You know, in our family, we were kind of taught to uh, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and, you know, get her done. And I think sometimes uh, we have a tendency to live our life by this phrase, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And I think sometimes that phrase keeps us from depending on God and relying on God to do great things in our life. 
I think we struggle with that. Think of some of the men and women in the Bible. I was thinking about Moses today when Dan was speaking. Moses was a humble man, but one time God spoke to Moses and he said to him, I want you to speak to the rock and I will bring water out of the rock. What did Moses do? He had to add himself to the equation. He struck the rock instead of speaking to it. And then he was very presumptuous. He said, we, meaning God and I, had to bring water out of this rock for you rebellious people. And I think sometimes we miss God working powerfully in our life because we tend to do those things that we think that we can do and accomplish on our own. So for me, I would say it probably comes down to pride. You know, I've got this. I can do this. And sometimes I need to just lay my pride aside so that I can embrace the bigger thing, the much bigger thing that God wants to do. So if you have any thoughts or questions or insights on, on this, we'd like to hear from you. We take the question. The question is, what do you think keeps people from stepping out in their faith? Fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. Fear of failure. Yeah. I mean, we don't wanna we don't wanna fail. Yeah. Anything Embarrassment. else? Embarrassment. Embarrassment? Yeah. Just fear of of the unknown. What they don't know, mm -hmm. what you just don't know yep. what's going to happen. Yep. We don't trust that God is big enough to take care of what He's asking us to do. Oh, we haven't practiced enough. The more you do, the more you practice, the more we see God doesn't have to be proved, but the more we see that God is able, and the more we practice, the better we get at listening to God and being obedient. But I think sometimes we're just lazy too. We're focused on our own lives and not the bigger picture of the eternal. It's more temporal mm -hmm. than eternal. We're working for God. We're just thinking about ourselves. Okay. Good. Um, so we did this drama, and I encourage you to check it out. We're going to post it on Thursday in its entirety, so you don't. It will. It won't be in the middle of the message, but uh, you can still hunt it down in the middle of the message. You can find it if you want to on our YouTube channel. Uh, but in the message, I mean, it basically rolled out one scenario where Abby, the main character, heard from God and then just basically said, no, no. And God kept saying, trust me in this. And she said, no. And um, so it, it ended and, and, this, and it didn't really play out real far with this mother that was invited to go to Christmas Lane, which is coming up in a less than two months. Uh, a little plug for Christmas Lane if you didn't get it today. Um, but, but so she wasn't even open to it because she was too grumpy because her kids were really just annoying her, uh, long story short. Um, and so what, after that ended, I just asked a question. I said, I said do you, do you like, think it's nuts that God would speak to anyone, um, which the, movie, the the TV show does a great job. She's so paranoid, fearful, like you guys said, of what other people would think if she even said that God spoke to her. Um, so she just doesn't tell anyone. She goes a little crazy over it. Um, but I opened up the question a little bit uh, in church today and said, hey, have any of you ever heard from God? And I, I opened it up a little bit more though, where I didn't say, like, God doesn't typically speak to me or anyone. Uh, actually, I've never heard him speak to me like Harv speaks to me, okay? But I have gotten these nudges. I have mm -hmm. been convicted. I have read a scripture and said, whoa, God, you're smacking me in the head with that. Um, so, so we have had that. So I asked in the church, that, has anyone experienced that? And I, I don't know. A majority, I would say, those of you guys that were at church today, I'd say a majority of the people raised their hand, which I thought was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just want to make sure I don't skip any of your questions. <laughs> 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 Got to watch those questions. Um, so, so I went on to talk to you about the whole idea of 
that, that we need to respond to that to prepare people. So what the ver- what this drama goes on to do is is the, the person that God was talking to asked her to give a Coke to this grumpy woman played by Tammy Frisco uh, <laughs> on the bench. And the second round, she does do that. She listens to God. She says, all right, with a little bit of sass and everything. Coriana did great at it. And, uh, and brings the Coke over there. She's like, I think I'm supposed to give this to you. And she gives her the Coke. And the whole demeanor mm-hmm. of the, 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 that Tammy was playing, Michelle was the girl's name that she was mm-hmm. playing, changed. Mm-hmm. It was just a simple splash, just a simple throw of a pebble in the water. Yeah. But that act of obedience opened up the Michelle character on the bench to this friend of hers to approach, played by Laurie Cooper, to come up and just say hello. And she was open to it this time before. She just kind of blew her off. And, and then they had a very brief conversation. And then uh, the friend invites her out to Christmas Lane. The long story of this way this story goes is that Michelle ends up going to Christmas Lane with her kids. First time back on ch- church property for since a child, all these things, and she's open to the invite to come back on Christmas Eve. And her life wasn't dramatically changed in that moment, but the splash goes on, and I felt like the, 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 those that participated in this drama did a great job in mm-hmm. illustrating that and the power that we have. So um, they prepared, the one person prepared Tammy playing Michelle for what God wanted to do for the next step in her life. So my question for you guys, I'm gonna turn it back uh, to all of you out there and including the, the Facebook world. Um, who has helped you to receive God's word in your life? Some of it can be more obvious. Like obviously we know that Harv has helped us all receive God's word, but what are those little surprise moments? What are those little times that we didn't expect? Like the woman on the bench that received the a random soda from uh, another person. Do you, any of you have any of those to share? Any of those? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to share this because this thrills me. My wife, Edith, has been doing after school now for five years. All five years, we have prayed that God would help us make inroads to the parents of the students. For us, that's our mission field. Right. I mean, they're already coming here. We're sowing into their children's lives. Let me tell you, with what your wife is doing with Creator Space, mm-hmm. there are some people now who, through um, five years of after school and just us being loving, us being kind, now they're making their way here to the church mm-hmm. on a Thursday night to do some creative things and hear about the creator. What's been interesting is their response. Their response has been, God has been knocking on the door of my heart for quite a while, and this was just the right environment, the right atmosphere for me to come in and say yes to God. And, you know, we, I feel like God is working uh, in my life. And that's been, I mean, such a blessing. I mean, Edith and I were reading it and fighting back tears because this is what we've been praying for, that God would help us reach outside the four walls of this church and be Christ to those who de- so desperately need him. And, and Harv, I think that, that is awesome. Yeah. But we cannot ignore the fact that somebody in those women, mostly women's yeah. lives, yeah. have prepared that soil outside of us. Oh, yeah. Somebody yeah. Run, that they ran into, somebody when they were in four years old and went to Sunday school, somebody has sown into them and, and God has brought them to this point yeah. that, wow, we, we were obedient in yeah. offering what we did, but somebody else, that's if you hear anything, hear that you matter. All of you guys matter. The little acts matter because it's bigger. God can accomplish more than we think. God can accomplish more, and it may not be anything we, I said this this morning, it may not be anything that we, we ever see. We may not ever see the fruit of it, but we got to trust it's going to happen. So back to you guys. Anybody have anything of a, of a, of a cool story? volunteer in a bookstore years ago and uh, people would come in and they would want to celebrate recovery bible and um, 
and, and they would leave, the Lord would say, I want you to go to celebrate recovery. And I would say, I don't really need to go to celebrate recovery. And that went on for about a couple of years. And then one day, the church that at that time we weren't here, but at that time the church opened it up on a time slot that I always went to church. And I said, hmm, okay, this is pretty obvious. And so, you know, I was pretty scared to go. And, but I did go, and uh, God just took it from there, and it's been our 11 years now. <laughs> so, you know, God just prepares our hearts to do things that sometimes we don't want to do. But he's already got it worked out, because even a month after I started, the church shut down the whole program. And I'm like, okay, what now? What am I going to do now? But before the night was over, two women came up, and one said, I'll meet with you once a week. And one said, you can come to my home, and we'll work the step study. I'm like, okay. Mm. And I didn't come to church that night with that answer. Yeah. And no, it's going to be shut down, but God said yes. Because yeah. God can accomplish more than you more can than think. We ever think. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um, so, I keep throwing this question out. Do you want to make a splash? Do you want to make an impact for the kingdom of God that just doesn't, uh, isn't just a little ripple? And if you're in on that, if you recognize that he can do more than you imagine, more than you think, um, I strongly recommend that you keep this, these a few tips I'm going to give you in mind because I believe this is what separates the random acts of kindness movement from the eternal splash. And, um, and I, I, as Harf said, I'm the youth director uh, here, and, and I've gotten into a, a, a little acronym kick lately, and uh, I just found that it, it just helps it helps me remember. And uh, the kids so often, I'm like, what, what, what did we talk about last week? Well, it goes right now. I mean, it's just a blank stare. So I was like, okay, what does the acronym uh, CLAP stand for? You know, that's what we're in right now with the youth group, CLAP. But uh, right tonight, I'm going to give you the acronym SPLASH, since we're talking about eternal splash. And, um, and I was a little challenged in this one because, because sometimes I come up with a concept and then I make an acronym to fit into it. But I already had this name. I already had this idea of eternal splash, and so I'm like, God, make it work, because I don't have the time to make this work, but I, I believe it did. So the first letter of, of, of splash, I know some of you get cut off on the end here because the camera doesn't totally fit, but you can figure it out. Um, the first letter is to be sure he can. Sure he can. And, uh, and, and with that, the whole concept of that he can accomplish more than we think that's the whole idea. If we aren't sure, we're not going to step out. And uh, and what one of the, the the illustrations I like to use is is if you aren't sure, so I'm going to switch here. If you are sure about something, you'll act on it. For instance, mm -hmm. if you're sure you can afford a vacation to Italy, okay, your dream vacation, you're going to book it, right? Sure. Yeah. Right. So if you're sure that you can afford that house that you were looking at. Uh, you're gonna make a bid on it. If you're sure that that seat is gonna work, you're gonna sit in it. Uh, so the same thing with the flip happens with the flip side of that. If you aren't sure that, wow, that, that car that you've really been liking and eyeing, you're not sure you can afford the payments, you're not gonna buy it. Um, if you're not sure you really can do the position or take the class that you're trying to in college or, or school, if you're not going to be able to really pass it or succeed in it, uh, you're not going to take it. We know we we act, we all act that way. If if you think the girl that you like doesn't really like you, I like this one. Uh, uh, isn't isn't going to really say yes if you ask her out? You're not going to ask her out. Who does that? All right, maybe a few of you do, but uh, most of you don't. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so. So anyway, we do the same thing with God. If we don't really have the confidence that he is going to make something more out of my little pebble ripple thrown in the, in the water, we're not going to do it. We're not going to get dirty. We're not going to get wet. We're not going to be stressed or uncomfortable or lose our reputation or whatever. No way we're not going to do it. But when we're sure that he can, when we're sure that he can accomplish more than we think, we're gonna step out, but you know what that takes? This is a blank on your uh, on your sheet if you happen to have one. It takes what? Faith. Faith. Thank you. Harp <laughs> always has the answers. Why is that? It takes faith. You gotta have faith. It's that confidence. In the Hebrews one uh, eleven, it's eleven one. Really, where is it? Let's see where I'm at on here. Um, 
11, 1, it says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the insurance of what we do not see. We've got to believe that if he leads us and brings us to something, he's doing something bigger than us. Okay? So, so I'd like to throw this back at you. Um, what, are, what are you, let's just affirm what God has the power to do that's bigger than us. What are some things that you know in your life that he has done that's bigger than you? You got any? Did you come with one of those? No. <laughs> well, I would say for me, uh, probably about two years ago, I was kind of struggling in my life, just with some things that were just kind of eating my lunch. And uh, I actually went with Charles and Mindy, and we went uh, over to HPN, and uh, it was to uh, celebrate, kind of a celebrate recovery type of service. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, uh, they gave a time for prayer, and I thought, what are Charles and Mindy going to think of me if I go forward? And I went forward because I felt like the Holy Spirit said, you know, you're struggling with this, so why don't you just be honest? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the, a couple prayed for me. And God just touched me. Mm. He just touched me. And so uh, I, that we cannot deliver ourselves. So that's mm. something that God did yeah. in my life that I could never do. He delivered me. He can restore. Yeah. He can deliver. Yeah. He can take you and put you on that rock. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I don't want to be the only one talking tonight, but I think that there's a lot of people that I need to help with their complaints. And I just see all the blanks that I need filled in for people that are going to be leaving. Some on Friday, some on Saturday, some are going to be praying at home. I've got 30 minute slots for lots of people. And um, this week, I just kind of, for some reason, I just saw all the blanks and I went down into a hole, but I came back out. And I just said, God's bigger than this. And he's already got the people. And I said, I'll just go ask and you just fill the people in and look out. And today, I just was standing in front of somebody and it's like, ask her. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think of that. And yeah. so two slots were filled. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God's mm -hmm. bigger. He's got it. If he asks us to do something, he, you know. Yeah. He is the way maker. We sang about it this morning in church. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't see it. Promise keeper. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of uh, um, my daughter, Kim. Many years ago when she was a real, really young mother, her her children were just really, really tiny. And she says, Mom, she said, come here and look what I do. And my daughter makes cards. And these cards were absolutely gorgeous. And she says, Mom, you can do that. I says, no, 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 I can't, no, I can't. And we visited and stuff. Well, I came back again to visit my daughter. She says, Mom, you can do this. And see, God's already planning stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and someone taught her, and then my daughter um, taught me, and she said, you can do this, and I thought that was the end of it, that's cool, you know, she showed me all this, well, I went home, and one day at church, in um, um, life groups, um, Janie said to me, Joanne, she said, in our group here, I would like you to send the card out if, if someone is missing or if they're ill. And I just looked at her in horror. And she says, well, you've made a few cards for me and they're pretty. She says, would you do that? And just another way of God stepping in. And then it went from that and it kind of grew and I kind of settled in it and God made me comfortable and, and not say, well, look at all what Joanne's done. But this one thing, God had, God's planned this out. There was this um, missionaries. I sent this um, birthday card to this little guy. It was his birthday. I sent him a card, and I didn't think any more of it. And a month later, I get this manila envelope, and the mother said to me, she says, you know what? We are struggling so. And she says, your kind words in um, your card to us to say hello was just precious. And the card you gave my son was so precious. And she says, my boy wanted you to have this. And he 
had drawn me a picture. And you know what? I don't believe that um, God orchestrated all of that. Yeah. Anything to do with me with the God orchestrated that. And mm -hmm. I have never ever forgotten that. I, yeah. and I think that is just mm -hmm. a cool thing how God used And Joanne it. sends out about 500 cards every year for our church. So, yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Okay, let's move on here. Um, let me remind you that, that this acronym SPLASH, these, all these are not in any particular order, other than starting with the confidence that you know that he can. Um, that really needs to be up in the forefront. But even that, God can still work through your doubt. God can work through your crisis of faith like Jonah had. Uh, that we read about in the Bible. Let me, let me also remind you that if you're in a crisis of faith, if you're struggling with that right now, you're like, man, I don't think God can do anything. I haven't felt him. I haven't been there in, in that. I, I, this is so foreign to me, but I don't even know why I'm watching this. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're in that place, I encourage you to pray this prayer. There was a man in the Bible that approached Jesus, that, that one of his children was really sick, and, 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 and he said, will you, feed, will, you, will you heal my child? And, and Jesus said, uh, do you believe that I can? And, um, and and the man responded in this. He says, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So again, if you're in a crisis of faith, that's a great prayer. Even if you don't feel it, you don't see it, you don't. Lord, I believe. I know you're there. Help me in my unbelief. So um, the next two, we're gonna, I'm going to lump them together because I really believe they go together. And it's pray and it's look and listen. Uh, the verse that I had with prayer is... Ephesians 5 16 and it says this make the most of every opportunity for these days for in these evil days and uh, and it's hard to argue that we don't have evil or that abounds around us um, and and Paul who writes this letter this this verse says make the most of it and I believe if you're gonna make the most of it you've got to approach it with prayer because that's recognizing that it's not you it's God that's gonna make this work it goes back to that he can accomplish more than we think um, and then when you pray you you need to look and listen uh, you need to basically have the eyes and the ears that, that for looking for that opportunity where God may be leading you um, and uh, one of the things that I that I have this this whole message today came off of a youth group message that I did much simpler last fall actually and and it challenged me in approaching each day and I want to encourage you guys to do this and in whatever wording you want to make it but to start your day or when you're driving to work or going to school on the bus or however it is um, to start your day and say God help me to, let me see I'm worried right now. Jesus, help me to make an eternal splash today. Simple prayer. Help me to make an eternal splash. And I, and I gave you guys some, some rocks that, that, that they came in here. And, it, and maybe you can gather a rock of your own and put it in place as a reminder. How, remind me, help me, Jesus, to make that splash. And then I encourage you um, to end your day with, Lord, I just want to pray for, thank you for the opportunities that I did have even the ones I didn't even recognize, mm -hmm. and pray for whoever you may have had an encounter with. And that's being conscious of what God's doing around you. Um, so if you ran into someone at the grocery store and you didn't even get their name, but you know that, that they needed an encouragement word, you can make it greater than a ripple by making it a splash and praying for that person. Okay, see that's where that's where, where the splash comes when you pull God into it. Um, so, so pray and look and listen. Um, and the, the the caution I want to say with look and listen is be sure that you are hearing from God. Uh, Harv, I, I, I don't know when it was that you spoke about it, but it wasn't that long ago. And going through interpreting the Bible, I think it was that week. But when you did your uh, your own part on, on God's Word series. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that we are hearing God properly or hearing from him. We have other forces out there that want to confuse, that want to lead us down a path of destruction. And the best way that I can tell you is that it will never, whatever you're hearing, if it contradicts what it says in the Bible, 
uh, mm -hmm. it's not from God. Right. I mean, it's pretty safe. And the other really easy one, too, is, well, oh, this isn't in the Bible to do this. Or, well, the easiest thing is if it's not in love, if it's not based in love, because God is love, then, then you're heading down the wrong path. Um, so, um, all right. The next one is all through Christ. And this is, again, the, the if you want to make an eternal splash, it can't be through you. It has to be through God, through Christ. And this verse that I use, some of you may be familiar with it, it's from John 15, 5. And Jesus says, for apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. No, you can do what? Nothing. 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 So apart from me, you can't make a splash that's going to last for eternity. He's saying that if you want to make an impact for the kingdom of God, if you want something to go on and on, then you need to remain in me. If you look at the whole verse, he says, remain in me, stay connected to me, go through me in all things, and then that splash is going to happen. And you may not see it, but we're trusting that God is bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, the next letter. Set self aside. <laughs> I love this one. Okay. Um, set self aside. If you want to make a splash, you need to, it says this in Philippians, and this is the message version of it. Uh, Philippians 2.4. It says, put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. I mean, can we do that? Put yourself as that. It goes back, remember I asked you, do you, do you mind getting wet? Uh, do you, can you get dirty for God? Can you say, oh, wait, I'm too busy. I got to go do this. I still got to go make dinner. I got to go, I got to do my homework. I got to put it aside. If God's saying, hey, David, I need you to do this. We need to drop it all. Okay, um, the the uh, the other translations will often say uh, consider others' interests greater than yours, right. um, which which is hard to do. I mentioned this this morning that that's hard to do if that's all it is in your head. But if you realize that God can accomplish more than you think, right. that wow, that's pretty awesome privilege. Wait a second, God, you're asking me to do something because you're going to create a splash out of this. Mm -hmm that could potentially go for on forever in this person's life. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the whole beauty of setting self aside if you can do it. All right, all right, so you may not see this, but we're up to H. Um, sure you can, pray, look and listen, all through Christ, set self aside. And when I was making this acronym, I, 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 I put it together. I feel like, like I said, I feel like it was God inspired. And then I got to the H and I was like, so if, if people could be quick enough on Facebook, I, I'd like to see what they would say for H. Most of you heard this message already. They're in this room. But like, like, what would you put in for H at this point? I was like, oh, man, this was so good until I got to H. So, so thank goodness for Google. Um, so, so I got on Google and I, and I, and I searched. Um, I put in words, action words, verbs for H. And, uh, and I'm going through them all. I'm like, oh, this is, this is bad. This is going to ruin the whole acronym if I cancel. So I got to, I got to hop. And I'm like, hop. I think Easter Bunny, I hate to say it. But I, I was like, hop. This is terrible. But, the, but then all of a sudden, I was like, wait, hop to it. You ever hear that expression? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, hop to it. Get on going. And, and I was like, thank you, God. Because... What do we need to do when he's nudging us? What do we need to do when he showed us that he's got something he wants to do in another person's life with the potential of an eternal splash? We need to hop to it. We can't put it off because his timing is perfect. In the drama that we did today, if, if the, the one person didn't respond that Coriano was playing, Abby, didn't respond to give the coke, mm -hmm. the, the woman on the bench would have never been receptive to the invite to Christmas Lane. If the person playing the invite to Christmas Lane wasn't hopping to it and seeing her friend on the bench and said, well, I gotta go shopping. I don't need eight more minutes to get to that one store and, and put, didn't put herself aside, then that opportunity, see how it all plays and we think every little moment matters. We need to look and listen so we don't miss this. 
Um, and, and the little piece I like to add on here, with, I looked, looked up the, the definition of hop to it, and there is a definition to hop to it, believe it or not. And it says this, it says to begin an activity or a task quickly and energetically. Um, and I like that because God doesn't want you to mope to it. He doesn't want you to drag on over to it. He wants you to say, man, I'm going in faith. God, you're doing something here. So act, move. Even though I'm going to get wet, uncomfortable, stinky maybe, whatever, who knows? Um, hop to it, will you? Make a splash. And, uh, and I, I threw this verse on here. It's a hard verse. Um, and it's from the book of James. Uh, James 4, 17. And it says this. If anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. So if you don't hop to it, God is saying, it's a sin. Mm -hmm. You're disobeying me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's in all things. Whether you hear him or not, whether you choose to listen to him or not, if you aren't responding to him, you're, you're, you're living your life in sin. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to be living in the fullness that he has to offer to you. So I want to just wrap this up with a, a couple. Oh, we have a, we have a, uh, I'm, I'm going to skip that one. I don't want to run too long. I will give it to you. Okay, which, which of the splash acronym <laughs> challenges you the most? Any of them? Which of these? Sure that he can, pray, look and listen, all through Christ, set self aside, hop to it, which, if any of them, uh, challenges you the most. For me, I'm going to say hop to it. Because it's always like, man, I, I'm convicted so often driving. I feel like that's half the time I see a homeless person, I see whatever, and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to, <laughs> I change lanes over. I'm like, I got to get to work or whatever. I, I just don't, and I guess that ties into the put the self aside. Yeah. Um, so, that's good. look and listen would definitely be toughest for me. I'm a very focused person. And so every day I have my list of 15 or 20 or 30 things that I'm going to do. Uh -huh. And I very seldom do I deviate from my list, but that's, that's a weakness actually for me sometimes, because when we think about Jesus, um, when he, when we think about his ministry, the interruptions in his life, when he was going to do something became opportunities for great ministry. And I think so often I'm like, this is what I got to do. This is what I got to do. And this is what I got to do. And sometimes I, I don't have my eyes open to see others. I see my own agenda as paramount and, and God has to help me with that. Because think about that. It's true, Dan. I mean, think about the lady that pressed through the crowd to see Jesus. Jesus wasn't there to heal her, no. but she pressed through no. to see him. But he stopped, no. and he allowed for that interruption. And what a great opportunity for healing and ministry. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's and that's what Jesus was all about. And, uh, you know, I didn't have to speak Sunday. And it was so wonderful to go out with the men for three hours and help somebody. Okay. And, and, and I felt like, oh, Harv, you ought to do this more. And the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, Harv, you ought to do this more. And so it's for me, I, I need to look to, I, I've got to look and listen. Mm -hmm. Rather than just saying, this is what i got to do. It's like, okay, God, what do you have for me today? Thank you. Yeah. I think we all can relate. <laughs> Um, I want to leave you with a couple simple ways to make a splash. Uh, but I want to remind you that basically this really isn't you making it up. It's really more this. Praying and looking and listening. Because you don't have to be creative. Because God knows what people need around you the most. Because he can accomplish more than you think. Okay? But... If you're looking for some opportunities, we're trying to create some more opportunities to make a splash here at, at Crosspoint. And one of the simple ways is to simply take the link of this message or the link of the message from this morning or last week or the week before that, copy it, and then pray. God, who can I share this with that, this, that would be receptive to it or that maybe needs to hear it? And send it off to them. And then make a bigger splash by continuing to pray as you send it off. And maybe even more by following up. But you don't even have to do all that. 
you can copy, paste, send. Do the verse of the day or a verse that you read in your reading and say, hey, Susie, I thought of you when I read this. Boom. What kind of splash? Who knows? God, if God puts someone on your mind, that's a nudge. That's a nudge that we're talking about. So, so do that. Encourage one another, too. When you see someone making a splash, you know, say, hey, Harv, I appreciate the splash that you've made in this by going to here, whatever. Remind people that we are about making eternal splashes. And uh, we need to be intentional in that. We need to make the most of the opportunities for these days are evil. And, uh, and, and people are hurting in the midst of it. Um, I want to share uh, a story that happened in the process of me preparing this message that, that God was putting on. And whenever I, um, I prepare these messages, I, I, I just dive. It's all consuming. I feel sorry for my family, but, um, but, I, <laughs> but I'm just consumed by it. And it, it's just, it's just, it, it, it impacts me, I'm sure, more than anybody. But um, so, so through the school year, I, I work at Imagine School. Um, it's, it's across from Sun Lake High School. But through the school year, I have been seeing this girl uh, walk on the side of the road when I'm going back in the school for my second shift, uh, walk on the side of the road heading toward Wendy's. And, and she, like some people, when you see them, you know, they just, they just say, I'm hurting. I'm alone. Uh, you know, she's by herself always. Mm -hmm head down just you, you just you just know it. and I just I remember passing a number of times I'm like oh that, that kid I wish somebody would reach out to her and I, I remember thinking that and then this week I saw her earlier in the week maybe Monday or Tuesday and and I was like wow I can be praying for this woman this young woman okay I can pray for this girl and uh, so I said a prayer and, and and I went on back went on to work and then and then it was Wednesday um, this Wednesday I uh, I went into work and didn't see her, didn't even think of her, to be honest. Um, and and I had to run out to fix the sign, do something with the sign at the school that's by the road. And as I walked out to the sign, uh, the light has, was was having a crosswalk. The light, there's a light right there by the sign. And coming across the crosswalk was this girl, and uh, and and I and I was like, wow, there she is. I'm not driving in my car. And then all of a sudden it popped in my head and I believe this was a God nudge. Mm -hmm. And I believe God said it to me, was asking me, not in words, but it just popped right in my head, ask her her name. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, really? Uh, I was like, and, and, and cause it's, I'm, I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm a grown man and this is a teenage girl. And, and, uh, and she's walking across the street at a little bit of a distance. But anyway, the, the whole hop it to it, uh, hop to it came to my mind and all this. And I was like, Dan, you have an opportunity. God has put this time and this connection together. Do something. So I was like, I was like hey, um, I see you. I, I drive to school every day here and, and I see you walking. I was just curious. What's your name? And... Um, and, and without much hesitation from this girl, she, she stopped uh, and she looked at me and she said, my name is Emily. Thank you. And um, my name is Emily. Thank you. And that's all she said. And, uh, and I was a little blown away because I'm not sure I said anything more. I might have said, hey, have a great thanks, Nice meeting you or whatever. And I'm sure I said something. But I don't know, but it just totally like floored me that, wow, God, I, 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 you wanted me to do this, and I have no idea what kind of splash was made. I have no idea what happened later on in her day. I had no idea what she was contemplating walking across that street. We have no idea of this. We have no idea who God's planning to put in her path at Wendy's or when she gets home or what. We, we, we don't know. We don't see that. We're not privy to that, but we're trusting. And this is, I've never had anyone say thank you for simply asking the name. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It isn't tough, people. But it does take a little awkwardness at times. It does take stepping out in faith. It does take trusting that God is bigger than you. Um, so I encourage you, if you aren't making splashes all over the place already, 
I encourage you to uh, step out and do that. I encourage you to grab a stone, uh, put it somewhere in your house where you brush your teeth, remind yourself to say that prayer, God, help me to make a splash today. Jesus, in the evenings, Jesus, I pray for Emily. I pray for whoever else. Um, I'll pray this evening that, wow, thank you for the privilege of speaking on your behalf today. I pray that that splash goes on. Simple prayers, that gives power to the splash. Um, so that's uh, what I had. I don't believe we have any more questions. Oh, we have a, do we have any more? Because we need to probably wrap up real soon. Just any last minute thoughts or suggestions? I would just like to piggy tail on what you said and just say, as a church, we really give opportunity to to make a splash. I mean, this um, um, getting real with Ray mm -hmm. that we've done, uh, I, I'm proud of that. Um, and I've sent that out and the response has just been tremendous. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've sent that to just about as many people as I can think. Um, and it's just, it's been a good conversation starter. Yeah. And I just think that sometimes we have to stop and say, this isn't all just for me. Right. All that we do here at Crosspoint, the messages, uh, you know, uh, refuge, yeah. uh, prayer, FPU, life groups, uh, Kids Connect, uh, Creator Space, all of this isn't just for us. We, we are giving opportunity for people to throw the stone and make the splash. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, if you don't know how to, if you're on Facebook, you probably know. But if you don't know how to just send little links, it's pretty easy yeah. to touch something and it says more and you hit the button and then a little arrow uh, comes up and then you just text it to whoever yeah. you want to. And I mean, that still makes no sense to you. <laughs> talk to someone that does because it is easily learned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. you know me, Dan. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. I'm Harv can do it. If so, I can do it, anybody can Harv, do it. I will it. say this though, that we we had a really good response with getting real with Ray. And if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out. Yeah. But but let the truth be told, I, I probably send out 25 individual texts to students every Monday and Sunday night and all that. And you know how many of them give me anything back? Maybe, maybe two. Yeah. Maybe two will say, okay, or whatever. Again, we're being obedient. We're being faithful. We're making a splash. We're not promised that it's going to come. And I'm not saying it doesn't come. I'm not, but you may not hear from people. You may not, you may not get any feedback. But that goes back to where we're trusting that he can accomplish more than we can, than we Absolutely. think. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, splash on. Yeah. All right. Good. We good. You want to close this in prayer? Let's do it. <sighs> Jesus, we thank you that you privy us to being a part of making an impact for the kingdom of God, for mm -hmm. your process of preparing soil in other people to come to know you, to grow in you, to be reminded of you. Lord, I pray that we would be faithful in this. I pray that we would forget about the uh, uncomfortableness, the getting wet, the getting dirty, the losing rep, whatever it is. Lord, I pray that you would help us to step out, to make an eternal splash for your good, for your kingdom, through you, for your glory. Amen. 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 All right.